we invite you to take your seat as Matthew Slade unfolds The Incredible Dr. Lynch. In my job, the hours are odd. So are the circumstances and the people I meet. You could even call some of them dangerous. My calling card reads, Matthew Slade, Private Investigator. Driving north on Highway 1, headed for the quiet solitude of the mountains, away from people, traffic, telephones. The road ahead was black and empty. The headlights of the Continental cut a tunnel of light through the darkness. As I rounded a bend, they picked up the outline of a car pulled to the shoulder of the road. A woman stepped in the shadows and waved for me to stop. Can you help me, please? Oh, what's the trouble? My car refuses to go. Oh, no. I don't know what's wrong. It just stopped. You mean the engine just died out on you? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you're out of gas. Yep, that's your problem. Oh, you must think me stupid to allow myself to run so out of gas. No, it can happen to anyone. Well, there's not much we can do here. I'll drive you down to the next town. Thank you. Your uh, accent sounds German. You been in the States long? Long enough. Uh-huh. Where are you headed? No place in particular. Uh, by the way, my name's Matt Slade. Erica Lynn. I seem to remember that name. You should. We met before? Oh, no, Mr. Slade. We've never met. It's funny. I could swear I... Oh, yes, now I remember. It was Kyle Lynn's. And you're... His widow. I turned to look at her. I found myself staring down the muzzle of a German Luger. I make it a habit never to argue with a lady, particularly one holding a gun. She kept the Luger leveled in my direction. A few minutes later, ordered me to turn right onto a dirt road. Out of a helicopter. Twenty-five yards further on, the road emptied into an open field. A small helicopter sat there, waiting. A burly, ugly-looking pug sat at the controls. Erica addressed him as Franz. Seconds later, we were in the air. I tried to sort things out in my mind. I knew that Erica's husband, Kyle Lynn, had been executed in San Quentin's gas chamber two years ago. My investigation into a murder case at the time had a lot to do with putting him there. I was puzzled. If she wanted revenge, why all this intricate byplay? She could easily have ended it at the roadside. I could only guess that someone else was pulling the strings. We were in the air for over an hour when the terrain below began to look familiar. We were over Lake Tahoe. A few minutes later, we settled down into a small clearing. A car was waiting there for us. We drove to a castle-like home, set well in amongst the trees. We entered the house, Erica pointing the way with her Luger. Then we stopped outside a large door. When do I meet the war of the man? You're sure not to be any patient. We will not serve your cause. He will rest. He will greet you soon enough. I shall leave you now. You will wait here, Mr. Slade. I glanced about the room. The only light came from the fireplace. A fireplace large enough for a man to walk into. The vast marble floor held only two throne-like chairs and a table. It was like something out of King Arthur. The silence was suddenly broken by someone at the door. I couldn't see who it was at first. Then he came closer. The light from the flames cast weird shadows across his face. Welcome, Mr. Slade. It is Dr. Lenz, isn't it? Ah, then you have not forgotten. We met only once, but then... You're not the kind of person one easily forgets. A compliment. Please, sit down, Mr. Slade. Make yourself comfortable. 
Let me I pour you some cognac. Fine. Here you are. Very relaxing. Well, it uh, might also help me to relax if I knew whether I was your guest or uh, your prisoner. You consider yourself a, a captive visitor, Mr. Slade. Well, that answers the what. Now, how about the why? I have been planning this meeting for some time, to be exact, ever since my son's execution. I am a man who believes in a scientific approach to everything. All life must have a purpose, and so must all death. Since he was innocent, my son's death has no purpose. That brings the scales to an imbalance, if you follow me, Mr. Slade. As a man of science, it is my duty to restore that balance. Well, what makes you think your son was innocent? He denied his guilt. I believe him. Evidence proved otherwise. The evidence. The evidence you supplied the police. It wasn't just the evidence I supplied. The police had their own. Ah, but yours was the most damaging to my son. Without it, the police had a circumstantial case. They best. That's your opinion. I deal in facts, Mr. Slade, not opinion. So you're dead wrong about this. Ah, no, Mr. Slade. You are the one who is uh, dead wrong. Am I? You planted the evidence against Kyle. You are the one who committed the murder, Mr. Slade. It is the only logical answer. Well, your logic is somewhat lacking, Doctor. Assuming I did commit the crime, why would I pick your son to frame? I didn't even know him. And for me, your, your reasons for framing my son are immaterial. It, it has changed now. My son is dead. You have to be out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're very amusing, Mr. Slade. Does it give you comfort to think of me as a, as a madman? Some, some sort of a... Uh, Dr. Frankenstein, perhaps? No comfort, I can assure you. You've deluded yourself into thinking your son was innocent instead of accepting the fact. The fact, Doctor, that your son was a murderer. Enough. Now that will be enough, Mr. Slade. Your will will deny you your freedom. Nor will they save your life. My life? You plan... You plan to kill me? Uh, nothing. Quite. Quite. That's the liberal. Ah, well, what is it, Mr. Slade? You, you look strange. The cognac, you. I took the liberty of curtailing any physical action on your part to leave by, by placing a drug in the cognac. I, I, I can't move. You will find that rather difficult. What are you going to do? I, I have plans for you, Mr. Slade. Beautiful, beautiful, scientific plans. <laughs> Jonesy, sit to Nelly. Do you have any idea where Matt is? By now he should be comfortably settled in a mountain cabin. With all the comforts of a weekend frontiers man. It looks like something's happened to Matt. No, what is it? Uh, it's nothing to get alarmed about just yet. But I've received a report from traffic division. They found Matt's car abandoned near Muir Beach. Muir Beach? But he was going to Clear Lake. I'm going down to take a look at the car. Oh, I'd like to go too. Could I, Sergeant? Of course. I'll pick you up in 15 minutes. When I opened my eyes, I found myself lying on the floor of a small room. It was bare of any furniture or windows. One wall had a faint outline of where a door might be. My head was still foggy. My body felt weak from the drug. How are you feeling, Mr. Slade? <laughs> Limp? doing? Uh, I should be delighted to tell you that, Mr. Slade. Uh, without your knowledge, but I tell you in the sir, no purpose. If you intend killing me, why don't you get it over with? Oh, have no fear. Do it or die in good time. Now, I am about to explain my plans for you. First, I want you to know, Mr. Slade, that you are about to make an important contribution to science. My studies of late have taken me into an area never before pursued by any of my colleagues. What I am taking is what effect the knowledge of 
the pending death of the heart on the human body. Uh, that is to say, how many times can a person be born to the point of death with his poor knowledge and still maintain mental balance? Any of the questions? I don't trust you. You are insane. You're using the name of science as an excuse for your own lunacy. I make your admiration, Mr. Fake, if it makes you happy, sir. You have little edge left in this world. The first experiment will commence soon. Soon. The lesson I'm sure will intrigue you. <laughs> everything left here in the car. I can't figure it. If he was hijacked, they'd have taken the car. Hey, wait a minute. Well, what's this? When did he have this tape recorder installed? A few days ago. Well, there's something on it. He may have recorded something you should hear. I'll back it up a little. There. Now, let's see what we got. driving to Clear Lake. Well, as I remember, Matt was involved in a case a few years back. The evidence he dug up had a lot to do with convicting a man by the name of Lynn. Of course. I remember now. It was Kyle Lynn. Well, then this must be his wife. What are we going to do, Sergeant? Put a tracer on Mrs. Lynn, see what we come up with. It's obviously tied in with her husband's case. And I have a feeling we'll be working against the clock. How is he handling? Resting comfortably. It was very close. The closer Mr. Slade comes to the brink of death, my dear, the more effective the result. What are you doing, Helen? It's... it's for Kyle, you must remember that. For Kyle, my dear. And for science. But is it right to take the law into your own hands? The law killed my son. <sighs> you have said you have proof of Mr. Slade's guilt. If he give it to the police... I have heard enough, Erica. Do not discuss this matter any further. Then show me the proof. Perhaps then I, I can justify what, what you are doing. You doubt my word? I never have in the past. I've, I've done everything you've asked of me. Do not question me now. But I must. Erica, does it really matter now who is the guilty one? What do you mean? You insist on knowing the truth. Very well. Kyle was guilty. No. The proof was from Kyle's own lips. Then how can you blame Mr. Slade? Whether Kyle was innocent or guilty makes no difference. Mr. Slade was the one responsible for his execution. That makes the conditions perfect for his being a subject for my experiment. Avenging Kyle's death is not the reason you wanted Mr. Slade. You are only looking for an excuse. A justification to subject someone to your hideous experiments. Surely you feel guilt for what you are doing to him. None whatsoever. Stop now before it's too late. I won't allow you to interfere in my work. I won't allow it. Mr. Slade. Mr. Slade, uh, are you all right? I feel groggy. How did I get out of that room? 
You hold it experiment. He had no intention of letting you drown. I cut it rather close. Oh, you must be very weak. Here. I made you some soup. It will help you regain your strength. Why are you doing this? Because I must. Your father-in-law wouldn't approve. He doesn't know. I thought he had eyes and ears in all the walls. Oh, he does, but... But right now he's busy preparing your next encounter with death. That's cheery news. I think I'd rather have him eavesdropping. Finish the soup. You need your strength if you're going to escape. Escape? I'm going to help you, Mr. Slade. Uh, why this change of heart? I've been wrong. I thought revenge for Kyle's death was what I wanted more than anything. Until Stefan told me that Kyle was guilty. He admitted that? Yeah. He's lost all contact with reality, Mr. Slade. He's obsessed with this experiment. Well, well, I'd say he's gone completely out of his mind. He needed a reason to subject you to his experiment. To satisfy his conscience by believing he was avenging Kyle. Yeah, well, that doesn't make him any the less dangerous. Uh, you have a plan for getting out of here? He has all the exits monitored, except for a tunnel under the house. That's our only hope. How do we get to it? There's an entrance from the cellar. The tunnel leads out above the river on the opposite side of the hill. The road to town is not far from there. I'll show you the way. Are you strong enough to go now? Uh, you just lead, Fraulein. I'll be right behind you. How much further? Not far. The tunnel turns sharply to the right. Right up ahead. You can see the exit from there. Another few feet around the bend. There's a... Oh! Oh, no! My gate is sealed off. I did not know there was a gate. Well, maybe I can move it. Well, oh, where do we go from here? There's no place to go, Mrs. Slade, except back the way we came. Well, we'll go back. Maybe we can find another way out. Come on. Still a chance to good doctor hasn't discovered our absence. I wouldn't count on that, Mrs. Slade. <laughs> Liz. Liz. I'm here, Mr. Slade. Right here at the other side of the gate. It was foolish of you to try to escape. Has he harmed you, my dear? No. This was my answer. You? Aiding him? I had a dream that he would be destroyed to me, to Kyle. I am not, I am not destroyed to you or to Kyle. You cannot continue this madness. Madness? So Mr. Slade has convinced you that I am mad at you. I beg of you, Tom. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's more to this than merely vengeance. I told you that. You mean your experiments? Yes. My experiments. They're a figment of your twisted imagination. They have no scientific basis, Liz. What do you know? What do you know about science? Enough to know that what you call science is nothing more than a mask. A mask to hide a twisted mind. Let us help you, Father. Help me? Yes. Yes, of course. You both can help me. <laughs> you, you will remain here where you are for now. If I have much to say, I shall turn to revenge. Then you will give me all the help I need. <laughs> this is Sergeant Donnelly, San Francisco Police. I'd like to speak with Sheriff Rogers. Yeah, I'll hang on. They're calling him to the phone. Well, I hope our time isn't running out. Uh, hello? Sheriff Rogers? This is Sergeant Sid Donnelly, San Francisco Police. I'm calling on an urgent matter, Sheriff. Every minute we delay could cost a man his life. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. And Erica Lenz and Dr. Stephen Lenz have a home on the north shore of the lake. They're holding a man by the name of Matthew Slade. And we think they mean to kill him. I'm on my way there by plane. I should be there in an hour. I'll meet you at the Lynn's home. Yeah, and hurry, Sheriff. He's on his way, Jonesy, and I'd better be on mine. Let me come with you. I'd rather you stayed here. Please. 
Okay, there's no time to argue about it. Let's go. Erica and I were still locked in our tunnel cell. I was examining the iron gate which blocked our entrance back to the house when an idea came to me. What are you doing, Mr. Snape? I can jam these rocks through this opening at the top of the gate. That's yeah. yeah, working. You do not understand that. What does that do? It's not an immediate solution to our problem, but it may buy us some time. We can't get out. If the gate won't open, then the good doctor can't get in. Now, there, that should keep him away for a while. Oh, what good is time, Mrs. Smith? Well, I'm hoping by now that people are aware of what's happening. How could anyone know? I have a tape recorder in my car. I turned it on while we were driving to the helicopter. If the police have found the car and played that recording, it should leave them right here. Listen. He's coming. Someone's with him. How are you keep you in? I know you are both anxious to make your contribution to the Open the gate, Russ. You can tell your boy to stop trying, Glenn, so the gate won't open. Where is wrong, from? Stand aside. I told you I took care of it. Clever of you, Mr. Slade. Ah, go to the laboratory. Bring the laser quickly. I admire your ingenuity, Mr. Slade. But it will always start to delay the inevitable. Maybe. <laughs> I dare say that, that you are the most optimistic person I have ever met. Except your hate, Mrs. Slade. It will make it so much easier for us all. Father, please. I never intended to harm you, my dear, but you leave me no choice. Leave her out of this. Save your please, Mrs. Slade. I forced her to help me. I prefer to believe her. It is no use, Mrs. Slade. You cannot be even with a madman. We are going to die. <laughs> die, that is right. Yes, die. <laughs> of the laser. My head struck the table and I fell into a whirlpool of darkness. And I regained consciousness. 
I found myself strapped at the table. A pungent odor filled the room. I rolled my head to the left and saw France lying on the floor. His body still smoldering from the laser blast. Not so pretty sight, Mr. Slade. You are as much to blame as I. Be thankful it wasn't you or Erica. Where is Erica? The table behind you. What have you done to her? A simple injection. She is unconscious. And now, Mr. Slade, <coughs> this hypodermic is for you. Sparkling will do no good. Those traps can hold a man with the ten times your strength. Only a fool continues to resist when resistance is futile. There. Now, it is done. What was in that syringe? You have a curious mind, Mr. Slade. However, I shall be happy to tell you. I have injected both you and Erica with a substance which will set into operation within your bodies a dehydration process. Death will come slowly and painfully. You will have endless time to contemplate it. Yes. Yes, I think I shall, I shall make this your last experiment. The injection began to take effect. A numbness crept through my bones. My head was swirling. Lynn started removing the straps that bound me to the table. As he removed the final strap, I summoned every ounce of strength left in me and swung my right hand to his face. I made my way to the door, down the stairs, out into the front drive of the house. I stumbled and fell. My head ringed with a thousand bells. And then I saw the car and the two officers running toward me. Matt? Yes. Oh, what's happened to you? Drug. The house. Are they in there? Yes. Wait. The girl. Okay. Dr. Lynn. Mad. Careful. Deadly weapon. Well, someone's in the doorway. Lynn's. Uh, uh, Sheriff, cover him. Welcome, gentlemen. Laser. Watch out. <laughs> The officers was hit by the laser, but his bullet had found its mark. Dr. Linz was dead. Jonesy and Sidonelli drove Erica and me to a nearby hospital where we were given an antidote for the drug. On our flight back to San Francisco, I thought about the night's ordeal. What I had anticipated to be a quiet weekend of solitude had turned into an incredible nightmare. I'm not a superstitious man. But for the first time, I realized that this very Black Friday was also the 13th day of the month.